Hello again, I am Blunty sitting behind Devil's Crevice 2.0, Devil's Crevice Reborn, Devil's uh, um, Resurrection, or some other witty biblical reference. So it has been one week now, well, eight days now, technically speaking, but we'll call it a week just for the sake of narrative conciseness, so I don't have to go on a long rambling explanation about how it's not, it's, it's eight days, not a week, because a week sounds cooler than... So Wiki, I revived this machine using some parts that I was sent in for review, namely the new Corsair fans, which as you can hear, my microphone is right next to them. Got a Fanatic uh, Hex 2.0 hybrid thermoelectric cooler, which uses heatsink and fan and a thermocouple device to pull heat away from the CPU, which is cool. Ha ha ha. The... I, pun. And the brand new Corsair XTI 480 gigabyte best of the best of the best SSD. And it's time to report on how all of these things have been going. So I, of course, monitored the temperatures throughout a bunch of different scenarios, including gaming, duh. But the best way to tell the story is also the simplest. A Prime 95 stress test. It's designed specifically to kick the ever-living hell out of your CPU and generate as much heat as possible. Now, as a base, the idle CPU temperature in the system was just above 40 degrees C, virtually identical to what my all-in-one cooler did. So we know we're on a nice level playing field here and I haven't screwed up the installation. With the stress test underway, my all-in-one temperatures would climb up into the low 70s, which is pretty damn good. A stock cooler, for example, would be lucky to keep you comfortably under 90 degrees C under this test. The Hex 2.0 though, as you can see for yourself, even in the default mode that keeps a very closely monitored and careful rain in on the thermoelectric cooler, so you don't risk dropping the cooling plate to a point where it starts condensing moisture out of the humid air onto your CPU, a bad thing, it was 60 degrees C, even after 15 full uninterrupted minutes of this brutal heat generating test. On, by the way, an overclocked i5-4690K, I also tried the Hex 2.0 so-called Extreme Mode, which the app recommends you when you're trying to engage it to not try and use it in humid environments for obvious reasons we just discussed, dew points and condensation and such. But with this engaged, I actually saw no significant difference in my temperatures at all. So the Hex 2.0 is remarkably consistent, and with only one fan versus two fans, it's actually quieter than my all-in-one cooler was, and it manages to keep a 4.5 GHz overclock i5 4690k under a prime 95 stress test at 60 degrees c that's fantastic that hex 2.0 cooler definitely gets the thumbs up it's an interesting and rare bit of technology it is one of the most compact ways you are going to get that kind of cooling efficiency um, and that kind of noise level in cases like this there are many 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 of the popular choices of heatsink and fan coolers that just don't fit in this case because they're too tall um, because you need thermal mass to pull away heat of overclocked CPUs like I've got in that one and, and then move it away. But the efficiency provided by the thermoelectric cooling makes this the most compact way you can get that kind of cooling efficiency. And like I said, uh, talking about the numbers, the time, type of temperatures I got with this were equivalent to, maybe even slightly better than, the all-in-one uh, liquid cooler that I had in here previously. Now... That Corsair SSD, the Corsair Neutron Series XTI 480GB SSD. Woo! <laughs> Woo! The Corsair Neutron Series XTI uses a Fizon's S10 controller chip, which for those not super nerdy about SSDs, is considered to be one of the very best, most reliable SATA 3 SSD controllers out there, featuring, amongst other technical bells and whistles, end-to-end -end data path protection, smart ECC, and advanced wear leveling, all boiling down to superb performance and rock-solid reliability. And of course, Corsair back it with a five-year warranty. And it's double the amount of case you'll find in most SSDs, so under heavy workloads, it will maintain the highest speeds possible. A lot of this is hard to show you in a simple way in a video, but what I can show you to really drive home how quick the drive is within the frame of gaming is some side-by-side -side load times. 
It's up against a Samsung 2.5 inch 5200 RPM hard drive. And yes, normally you'd probably be wanting to run a 7200 RPM hard drive to run your games from, but the 5200 is what happens to be in this machine, so that's what I tested against. So it'd be fair to assume normally the hard disk drive scores would be slightly faster. But that said, they'd still be nowhere even close to the XDI's speeds, which just obliterate a mechanical hard drive in every manner. Time to load a save game in Doom on the Corsair XDI was a blistering 17 seconds, while the hard drive churned along for almost a full minute longer. Loading the Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark was nearly twice as fast on the XDI, and it's important to note, although load times are vastly improved, in-game performance is largely unaffected. Exceptions will be in things like large game stages and open world games, which will be streaming textures constantly from the hard drive to your video card memory, where you can and will see a marked improvement in things like late texture pop-in. Loading a level in Rise of the Tomb Raider is basically twice as fast. Now, all of these seem like small slices of time, but big picture, imagine how much more gaming and how much and how much less waiting you'll do in even one gaming session, never mind over the lifetime of the drive. Now, of course, none of this is a shock. We all know SSDs make gaming much more pleasant, but it's still nice to visually demo just how much of an improvement it can make. Because you can be told a billion times, well, yeah, SSDs are better for gaming, but if I just show you, it's really easy to see the benefit. So the long and the short of the story is about the Corsair Neutron Series XDI drive is it basically maxes out what can be done on a SATA 3 connection. These 2.5 inch drives go through the SATA connection. The only way you're going to get faster SSDs is by going to the M.2 style uh, SSDs or the ones that plug directly into your PCIe slots or whatnot, because those laneways are, there's, you know, there's more bandwidth to use there. But if you're after a 2.5 inch SSD on, on SATA 3, that is as fast as they will get. And it is not the only drive out there that can do that. There are plenty of very, very fast SSDs out there. The thing I like about the Corsair one, and the thing that I think makes it worth, worth the money, is all the other technology on there. Like I said when I started out, double the cache on there, which means it's going to be able to keep up with itself under massive loads much, much better, which means if you're using it for things like, you know, 4K video editing as your scratch drive or whatnot, it's going to be the best choice for that. It has, you know, the power off protection, which I love, which means if suddenly I lose power, and of course we're not dealing with a laptop here, are we? If you lose power on a laptop, your battery kicks in, you're fine. But if your power drops out on this and you don't have a UPS or whatnot, if you've got something sitting in your SSD cache that hasn't been written to the actual memory yet, it's gone forever as soon as the power drops. That won't happen with this. If the power drops, you know, it's got enough, you know, power inside to go, oh, bloody hell, the power's gone. We better write this data across the permanent storage and it saves you. And let me tell you, if you're building a high-end gaming rig and you want everything in your system to be the best it can possibly be, ba-bam, I think that is an absolute choice. But yeah, there you go. That's the verdict on the gear that went into reviving Devil's Crevice 2.0 or Devil Reborn or... I don't know. What, what do you guys think we should call it? It was called Devil's Crevice to begin with because it uses a Devil's Canyon CPU and Canyon Crevice and Devil's Crevice. It's a it's a bum joke kind of thing. You know, the Devil's arsehole, the Devil's Crevice. But, you know, we've revived it now. So Devil Cre Devil's Crevice 2.0, Devil's Crevice Reborn, Devil's Crevice Resurrection. I don't know. Head into the down below area, vote. I'll have to come up with something cool for it. Because it is going to be in a, a machine that goes into service for a certain thing. So thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.